Bruchim Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Last week we talked about sin. So this week we're going to talk about guilt. Uh, I think guilt falls into two parameters. There's guilt that's defined by others, such as religion or a, a uh, jury of your peers who will judge you. And then there's the guilt that we have that's defined by ourselves as we see ourselves and as we judge ourselves. But well, one of the questions becomes, actually two questions, is guilt good? Is it bad? Is it productive? Is it destructive? And is it a product of the Yetzatov, the good inclination? Or is it a product of the Yetzahara, of the evil inclination? Which sounds strange because we think of it as a righteous thing to feel guilty about doing something that was wrong. The book of Tanya written by the Alter Rebbe is based on a pasuk in the Torah that says, V'kara v'davra l'acha ma'od b'fichol b'lvavcha l'asoso. That this thing is very close to you in your mouth and in your heart to do. God gives us an opportunity to repent every year. Yom Kippur. And the question becomes, when we have these feelings of contrition, when we have feelings of guilt, and we have these type of feelings, we, you, we kind of wonder where does it come from, even though I don't think we wonder, we assume that it's our good inclination telling us that we haven't done all we were supposed to do. And therefore we need to become better people. And I'm not sure, sir, I'm not sure that's so simple that the Eight Sahara is pretty, pretty snick, slick, he's pretty conniving. And our base, most of us, are good people. And here comes the time of repentance. And it's very difficult for us just to let it go by without some feelings of guilt, some feelings of contrition, some feelings of repentance. And if the Yetzirah, if the evil inclination wouldn't let us beficha, talk about it, or bilvavka, think about it, then the truth of the matter is you might actually do something about it. But from year to year, we really kind of think about the same thing and talk about the same thing. Example I give is a health club. Comes January, in December, everybody makes their New Year's resolution. This year I'm working out try to get into a health club in January, especially the first week, you can't even find a parking space. 300 lockers, 10,000 members. How does that work? Because they only have to worry about the first week in January. After that, it drops off every day. In fact, the, uh, the um, emergency rooms are filled with people who think they're having heart attacks because they worked out for one day and all of a sudden everything hurts. So they're sure they're dying. So they have these thoughts. They just don't follow through. So when we feel guilty, when we feel like we need to be better, sometimes even though we'd like to think it's a side of good, many times we're being outsmarted by the side of evil who wants us, he encourages us. Talk to people about it. How this year I'm going to be better. This year I'm going to learn more. This year I'm going, to, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to be nicer to people. I'm going to give more charity. And you think about all the things you're going to do. But like the health club, you may even begin, but can you continue? And the answer is most of the time not. And the next year we go through the same process again, and it's brand new. And this is how he outsmarts us, by getting us to think about it and talk about it. He only gets ready and gets, comes against us when we start to do it. And that becomes the problem. We need to follow through. You know, in every sport, there's the swing. But more important than the swing is the follow through. If you don't have the follow through, the swing is always disrupted. We all swing. Most of us don't follow through. And this becomes the battle that we have with the side of evil. Now, which is worse? We have thoughts of sinning, and we also have actions of sin. And one would think that, well, a thought is only a thought. An action, you're doing something, so an action would be worse. 
Not so simple. You see, because when you have a thought of a sin, it's never satisfied. That thought continues and it grows and it can build into things that are mountains. And there's really no regret because you didn't do anything. And eventually, the side of you will get you to do something that's a lot greater. If you have an action, you're satisfied with that action of sin. And after you're satisfied, you may well feel some remorse. Now, where is the actual origin of, uh, of guilt? It actually goes back to right at the beginning of creation. Adam and Chava, first man and woman in the garden. God says not to eat from the tree of knowledge. They eat from it. And then when God approaches them in the garden, it's interesting. If they really don't have any guilt. It's only because God approaches them that all of a sudden they feel like they've done something wrong. And right away, Adam, Adam says it was Chava. Chava says it was a snake. So it's not like they did anything wrong. It wasn't my fault. And God, being God, didn't even bother asking the snake. He just punished them. Because this could go on forever. As long as there's somebody else behind you, that's someone else to blame. Because it can't be me. So, they really didn't feel guilt, per se, until they were approached by God and there was no place else to go. So, really we have something called guilt versus regret. Because the Jews in the desert, they sinned with the golden calf and then they sinned again with the spies. God forgave them for the sin of the golden calf, but not for the sin of the spies. Then in a sense, maybe the sin of the spies was a more grievous sin. Pardon me, the, of, the, of the golden calf was a more grievous sin, serving idols, rather than just being afraid to go into the land. A lot of people are insecure. God maybe should have been able to help them through that. You know, we have that with our children. A lot of times they're insecure and we help them through. Why is it that God forgave them for the sin of the golden calf? Golden calf, 40 days after they received the Torah on Mount Sinai. And the answer is because with the golden calf, they acknowledged that they sinned. When it came to the spies, the way they said that they sinned was, if God says we have sinned, then we sinned. But that means that they really had no regret. You know, we all drive a little bit too fast, more than we should. We're, we don't have a regret. We're guilty if we're caught by a police officer. But that doesn't mean that we've actually acknowledged the fact we did anything wrong. Speed limit's not fast enough. If they don't want me to go that fast, they shouldn't give me a car that does 150 miles an hour. I mean, why would they give me something like that? So it's really not my fault. They just got caught. But if I know I wouldn't get caught, I sure would be driving faster. So the only reason why I have guilt is because of the fact that I got caught. Every time I drive fast and I don't get caught, I don't go home and say, oh, it's ridiculous, I really have, I have to slow down, I'm driving too fast. You don't even think about it, because you didn't get caught. Now, the only time we have regret, and not only that, we, we have, what's our guilt? We, we have sins of passion, addiction, and we feel bad about it. But basically it's temporary. It's a quick moment. Or our answer is, come on, no one's perfect. So, yeah, I know I should be better, but no one's perfect. And not only that, God made me this way. So if God made me this way, I, I, he, must, he must have wanted something about that. So should I really feel that guilty about not being a perfect person? And, you know, listen, I'm good in other ways. So we diminish what it is. Do we really have guilt about it or something that lasts it's interesting the person we learn true feelings of guilt about from is Dovin King David King David was wanted to be part of the Markova the chariot of God the throne of God there were three parts Abraham Isaac and Jacob and he said I want to be the fourth wheel and God said that they were tested he says, test me. Big mistake. But God tested him. And God said it would be of a sexual nature. 
And what it really was, that was the vehicle. But the real test was how would King David feel about being confronted with his act, which could have been justified. And not only was he guilty about what he did, and did tshuva repented, but what he said was, Vishivisi lenegdi tamit, that I keep my sin before me always. How do we perceive sin? There was a young man who was studying in the famous yeshiva of Slabotka. And on a Shabbos, one of the rabbis was walking outside the dormitory and he saw from the second floor there was smoke coming out of the window, which amazed him. And he went upstairs to the room and he opened the door and there was a young man who was studying a Gemara, smoking a cigar. And he looks up and he sees the rabbi and he says, oh, I forgot. And the rabbi says, you forgot it was Shabbos. He says, no, I knew it was Shabbos. He said, you forgot you were smoking. He said, no, 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 I, I knew I was smoking. He said, what would you forget? He said, I forgot to shut the window. So the guilt was, was not about what he was doing wrong. The guilt was he forgot to cover up what he was doing wrong. And this is many times, so it's not that we feel bad about doing something. And then there's the flip side of it of Jewish guilt. You know, something that cripples a person. Um, uh, that you, you get so much into it that you can barely move. And you walk around feeling so low and unhappy. In fact, that's what the, again, another tool of the Eight Zahara, the Holy Baal Shem Tov tells us. More than the side of evil wants you to sin, the side of evil wants you unhappy, depressed. So you can also go either it's no big deal or it's such a big deal that you become so depressed that, you know, it's when a person works out all the time and tries to watch what they eat, second they stop working out, they go right to the refrigerator and right to the ice cream. It's like, okay, if you're not going to work out, at least watch other things. No. Once we let go of one thing, we go completely to the other side. Once a person gets depressed, he will automatically sin because you lose all hope. You, that state of depression is automatic sins. And the, the, the Yetzirah is such a jerk. He's so awful. First he gets us to sin, and the guilt that we have comes from him. He won't even allow us to enjoy the sin that we just did. He wants us to feel guilty about it. He has his coming and going. That's how evil he is. Jewish guilt, you know, our mothers do that to us. You know, we're kind of brought up with it. We as Jews, is something that guilt, I guess, that goes back again to Adam and Chava. Could have, would have, should have. We spend all day thinking about the past. And not just learning from it, but wallowing in it. Stay, living in yesterday. The key becomes is that guilt. You have good guilt, you have bad guilt. And it becomes important for us to put it in its proper context. Guilt, if guilt is something that can bring about positive and permanent change, and that's really regret. Not just guilt, not just a word, but a feeling of regret of what I did. That gives a call to action, a call to action, then it's good. Because that will help you. Sometimes when a person gets so low, then he knows there's only one way he can go. You know, it's hard to commit suicide jumping out of a basement window. If you're that low, you got only one place to go. So if a person gets to that point where the guilt makes him think about actually doing an action, then that guilt is good. On the other hand, if it causes negative feelings and depression and does not connect to a positive action, it can be devastating. And the guilt that you're feeling is not from the side of good, it's from the side of evil. And a person needs to know that. And what you really need to do is talk to someone else in that point, either a professional or a friend, that you can be honest with. Because they will not see your guilt as badly as you will if you're in that situation where it's crippling you. 
So again, and not only that, even if you if you if you admit your guilt to someone else, sometimes somehow it makes you want to sometimes be better, because someone else knows it's not a secret anymore. And if you can do that, and work on the positive guilt, use it in a positive way. You can use it as a tool to overcome those weaknesses that we all have. There's nothing wrong with the person sinning. Everyone's human. Everyone errs. The key becomes to not talk about it and think about it. But by all means, do something about it. Thank you very much. God bless and have a good Shabbos.